What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 5th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks ETFs that did well today and that I see potential for for the rest of this week and heading off into the middle of February. So for all you guys out there that do enjoy the channel, Channel that find value in the videos feel free to smash that like button down below it really does help the channel grow and I appreciate you guys to the fullest for doing so and supporting the channel it means a lot to me so we saw the market just close about five six seven minutes before I'm recording this video and we ended up closing the day yet again another green day today guys the SPX the S&P 500 the 500 largest US traded companies was up around 0.5 percent today up around nearly $13. The Dow Jones was up around 175 points at the close, up around 0.68%. And the NASDAQ, yet again, had another solid day, you know, due to the tech stocks doing very well today. Again, this one's up around 1.1% right now. And again, this is the future. It's up around 76 points right now. So very, very solid day, um, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ and the overall market. So let's take a look at some time frames on these different indices so we can get a better understanding of where the markets could be potentially moving over the next couple of days. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, we've been talking about the pattern on the SPX, the S&P 500, the fact that it broke above the 180 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of months. That's a very good sign that it's reversing to the upside and there's honestly no signs of it reversing to the downside as of now, right? We've been talking about how, you know, we do expect a pullback coming, right? The RSI is seeming like it's very overbought. It's been about a month and some change now, you know, about a month and 10 days of straight green right now in the SPX. And I feel like, you know, every single day, guys, I know myself and the entire community, I feel like we've been waiting for a pullback in the market, but we are honestly just not getting it. But again, guys, I'm still sticking by my word that we are going to get a solid pullback, probably something in, you know, in the lines of what happened right here. You know, we saw it fall uh, you know, back in the beginning of November from around 28.12 to around 26.30, which ended up being around a 5-6% pullback. And honestly, guys, I don't think this is too far-fetched because for all you that have been paying attention to the markets, you know, we've posted the best January since 1987. In the month of January alone, right, we had a 13-14% gain in the S&P 500 alone, which again is the best January. January in the stock market since 1987, January 1987, and of course, we've been roaring in the month of February as well. If we're just taking a look at this month alone, guys, we're up a solid, you know, 1%, 2%, you know, 2%, 3% from the beginning of this month, and the green seems like it's not ending, right? It seems like it's not ending. So let's take a look, you know, at some other longer term charts here so we can get a better understanding of the larger term picture here. So a couple of videos back, you know, actually more than a couple of videos, probably like a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about this 180 SMA being the support for the SPX here on the three year one week chart. And obviously guys, you know, we saw it bounce there very nicely. It held above it back in 2016 where it hit the low of around 1810 and we ran all the way back up to 2940. Obviously, we all know this. This is, you know, the peak that we saw, you know, roughly at around the uh the beginning of October. We sold off all the way to 2400. We bounced on there, which is a good sign of the continuation of the uptrend on this longer term chart and now we're trending right under the 50 SMA on this three-year, one-week chart, which has been a resistance over the past couple of weeks, guys. So keep an eye on this resistance level. You know, for the SPX, it got rejected through December, or, uh, rather October, all the way through December under this 50 SMA. So this could potentially be another rejection spot for the SPX, so keep an eye, are we going to get rejected to the downside here, 
or are we going to break to the upside and continue the uptrend? So another one I want to show you guys is this, is this one year, one day chart where we're trending under the 180 simple moving average. Keep an eye on this. This could potentially be a resistance. If not, guys, if we break above it again, that's a continuation of the uptrend and that's not too good of a sign. Um, you know, if you're short on the market, if you're bearish on the market in the short term, if you are bearish, you would love to see the rejection here and possibly a break below around uh, this previous uh, resistance, which is now a support, which would be around, let's say, 2670. So if you're bearish, guys, you know, you want the markets to go down. What you want to see is a reje rejection here at the resistance at around 2750, roughly where we are right now, and ultimately a break below this old resistance, which is now a new support at around 2670. So in terms of the SPX, guys, and again, the entire market, you know, we're out of that downtrend on the 180 chart, but we are at very critical resistances on the longer term chart on the three-year and uh, the one-year chart. And if we're taking a look at the 20-day, one-hour very quickly, just like yesterday, guys, we're still maintaining that uptrend pattern, higher highs, higher lows. We just pushed up to another higher high right now at around 27.38. So we could potentially pull back tomorrow, you know, heading into the open and either continue this uptrend by pulling back and bouncing up for another higher high or, you know, if we do end up pulling back here, let's say we have a red day tomorrow, keep an eye on possibly us getting down to around, let's say, this support level at around 27.20 in terms of the SPX. So keep an eye on that level, guys. But all in all, you know, we're uptrending higher highs, higher lows here on the 20-day, one-hour chart with honestly no sign of a reversal. So let's take a look. At the Dow Jones, very quickly, very similar pattern, guys. Higher highs, higher lows here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. We are still uptrending, no signs of a reversal. We pushed to another higher high today, reaching around $25,427. Again, we had a 175-point green day today in the Dow Jones. And on the 184-hour chart, like we've been talking about, very similar to the SPX, guys. We broke out of that 180 SMA resistance. We're trending up. And honestly, it's not looking like we're pulling back besides the fact that this RSI is overbought, you know, on pretty much all of the indices. This is something that we've been talking about. And uh, honestly, it does concern me a bit, guys, which is why I do think, you know, in the next couple of days, maybe a week or two, we are going to experience a pullback, like I said earlier on in the video. But just judging off these technicals right now, you know, I'm not really seeing a pullback coming, you know, really, you know, until we see a strong rejection to the downside, you know, at least, you know, a 2% red day, 1%, 2% red day, you know, 3% honestly would be great too, is what I would like to see for the start of a pullback, right? But until we see that, you know, you know, it's still up in the air in my personal opinion. So if we're looking at some longer term charts here, unlike the SPX here on the one year, one day chart, the Dow Jones actually broke the 50 SMA, uh, resistance. This was a couple of weeks back, actually about a month back now. This was back in January, and we actually just recently broke the 180 SMA resistance here on the one-year, one-day chart, which is a pretty good sign. But remember what I talk about, guys, in terms of these SMA crossovers? Whenever the 50 SMA crosses below the 180 SMA, that signals potential downside, potential bearish moves in a stock ETF or an index. So the fact that we do see this cross to the downside, this could signal a pullback coming soon in terms of the Dow Jones. And to use it to the opposite extent, if you want to see an uptrend, a bullish potential sign, what you would want to see is a break of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA. So for example, guys, you know, if this was pushing up, if this 50 SMA was pushing above the 180 SMA right now, this would indicate in my eyes, 
more uptrend potential to come. But the fact that we're showing this pattern right here, guys, this could indicate a pullback in terms of the Dow Jones in the next coming days here. And then on the three-year, one week, very similar to the SPX, guys. We held the 180 SMA on the three-year chart, but the difference here is that we're trending above the 50 SMA with no resistance in sight, you know, in terms of... Uh, you know, simple moving averages here on the longer term chart. And we do see the EMA here slowly looking like it's going to break above the 50 SMA, which is another uh, bullish sign, right? That's another bullish sign because remember these EMAs that we use, you know, on this channel, me specifically, they're smaller time frames e EMAs and they're quicker acting than the 50 SMA. And of course, the 50 SMA is quicker reacting than the 180 SMA. If you guys don't understand, uh, you, if you guys want to learn more about these indicators, rather search my channel, Think or Swim Indicators, and there's like a 20 minute video going into depth with tips and tricks about these EMA simple moving averages. And, uh, you know, go check out that video if you want to learn more about that. But that's pretty much the gist of what's going on in terms of the Dow Jones. The NASDAQ here, guys, again, very strong day due to the tech stocks being up. We can see on the three-year, one-week chart, very similar pattern to the SPX, to the Dow. We held that 180 SMA here on the one-year, one-day we ended up breaking that 50 SMA back in January, and now we're actually under that 180 SMA as a resistance here on the one year, one day. And like I talked about in yesterday's video, guys, it's looking like we finally broke out of this resistance at around 68.20. We held it as a new support, and now we're looking to fill this next channel, which is from around 68.90 up to around 71.30. And of course, the 70 point day today really just, you know, confirms what I said a couple of videos back that we are going to fill this gap which is what is exactly happening now. So keep an eye on this, guys, in terms of the NASDAQ. The next resistance right now, it really is about 100 points above from where we are at around $7,100. So, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ, guys, you know, not to go too deep into it, but we are really just in the same situation as the SPX and the Dow. Higher highs, higher lows. We pushed to a higher high today at around 7,000. We finally, did we crack 7,000 today? Yeah, I'm pretty sure today, yeah, obviously we cracked 7,000 because we're at 7,008. So yeah, today we finally got back into the 7,000 range in terms of the NASDAQ. So you know, guys, the bullish run, the bullish past couple of weeks is still intact, and it's honestly looking like it's continuing. But just keep an eye on those resistances that we talked about on the larger term time frames. They really do matter, guys, on a technical perspective. And of course, the RSI does seem a bit overbought on all of these indices, which is another thing to keep an eye on. So what did I trade today, guys? Well, I traded Cron again. And if you guys are in that Discord group chat, the link is down below. 100% free. You guys saw that I traded Cron. I think a lot of other people ended up trading Cron as well. And this has been a marijuana stock that's been on absolute fire. It's been on an absolute tear. In this year alone, guys, it's doubled in price. So let's talk about it. So yesterday, I actually traded Cron as well. And today, it really did kind of a similar pattern, which I was able to capitalize on. So we see the crazy run. Let me just show you guys just in 2019 alone, if we go here to 1 slash 219, we were at $10 a share, guys. $10.30, literally about a month and three days ago at the time that I'm recording this video. And we've run up nearly 100%. You see, you can see it right there, 140% in terms of Cron. So if you were to dump in your account in Cron right now, you'd be feeling pretty happy. Or if you dumped it in in the beginning of 2019, you'd be a pretty happy man or woman, right? That would be, you know, an absolute crazy start to the year. But, you know, I personally did not do that. I'm sure a lot of you guys have owned Cron since the beginning of 2019. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if actually you have owned Cron. But just to get into it, guys, yesterday I traded a very similar pattern here, which means, uh, you know, if you guys watched yesterday's video, you saw that I traded the pullback bounce on Cron in the morning. And I really just did the same exact thing today. But today was more of an aggressive pullback. I was a little bit more cautious because we did see some strong selling this morning in 
and Kron. So I was pretty cautious, actually. I scaled in with a smaller position than I did in yesterday's video, uh, or in yesterday's trading, rather. But just to get into it, guys, you know, what I liked about Kron heading into the market open and why I was watching it very closely is because it started to gap down from the top here at around 2450. And what happens when a stock gap downs into the market open? Well, that opens up a profit margin for that stock. So I was actually watching it, you know, to hold that $22 level, um, you know, at the beginning of the market, which obviously did not end up happening. And, you know, if it were to hold that 22 level, there was around a 10% profit profit back up to the previous resistance but once the market opened guys we saw obviously it tanked down all the way to 2074 opening up another six percent margin and then once i started to see a bottoming out point i did not get in here at the absolute bottom because guys at this point think about it if you're looking to get in right here that's a bit more uh you know, risky, at least in my opinion, because there's always room to go further down and there's no really confirmation that it's pushing back up. But once we did get the confirmation that it was slowly creeping back into the $21 range, this is when I was slowly starting to scale into my position because I figured at this point, you know, it's worth trying to scale in because the stock has been on fire. It's done this pattern a couple of times and it's worth, in my opinion, playing sometimes, you know, these marijuana stocks that do end up running 10-15% in a day, you know, of course, risk managing and scaling in slowly, guys. This is what I ended up doing, you know, ended up scaling in at around $21, ended up adding a little bit more at around $21.65, and then once I started to get deeper into my, um, you know, uh, green right? Once I started to get deeper into the profit, I put a trailing stop. I set my limit at about 22 something. I think it was around like 22. What was it? It was at about 2.5% from where I was. And my average cost was at around $21 and 55 cents. So let's see 2.5%. It ended up being at around like 22 20, I believe something like that. But anyway, you know, the whole idea here and my, you know, my uh, strategy behind this trade was, you know, slowly trying to profit on that fill of the gap back up to that pre-market resistance. Obviously, now that the day is over, we see, you know, we almost got got back up to that pre-market resistance. We almost filled that gap. But at this point, guys, I was already out of the trade with my 2.5, 2.2, 2.3%, whatever it ended up being, right? in terms of cron so this is what i typically do when i day trade guys i like to see stocks that are gapping down that have a margin of profit and i like to see them find a support at the market open and then slowly start to see if they fill the gap guys this is something pretty basic that i do you know a lot of the times and it does end up working with proper risk management with proper planning you guys can most likely do this as well but again don't just copy my trades don't just copy you know what other people are doing you know make a plan for your own understand do your own due diligence and you know trade what you guys understand that's the most important thing here so that's what i ended up doing in terms of cron back-to-back days trading this marijuana stock so let's talk about some other stocks very quickly that people ended up trading that I see potential in. So we saw, you know, Apple ended up doing very well today. Again, up $2.93, up around 1.71%. We see it's extremely overbought right now, guys, in terms of the RSI. What do you think for a potential short-term put option on Apple, guys? I've been saying this about Facebook Facebook's in the same category too, honestly. I wouldn't mind playing a short-term put on Facebook either. What do you guys think about that? You know, these are two potential scenarios that I'm looking at. You know, Apple for a potential put, Facebook for a put, right? This one's already up above that $80 or 80 range, you know, roughly at the 80 range in terms of the RSI, meaning it's extremely overbought. And honestly, guys, I do expect these to pull back sooner or later. They're extremely overinflated, guys, especially Facebook and Apple. And, um, you know, the other tech stocks, Amazon did pretty well today, up around 1.5%. Netflix did around 1.2 today. 
Google ended up doing pretty decent after the earnings report yesterday, up around 1.16% today. Microsoft's back into the 107 range, guys, up around 1.4%. Another potential put option that I'm looking to play, and I was talking about this one in the Discord, is on AT&T, guys. We can see, you know, based on this, this 184 hour chart, AT&T seems to have gotten rejected from the top of this channel, indicated by this red trend line. We see that here. This was a lower high from the previous, and this was a lower high from the previous, and this was a lower high from the previous, right? This is on a straight up downtrend, and the fact that we're pushing back into the $29 range now, we broke that 180 SMA, the EMA's pointing down. It's looking like we'll get a potential cross of the 50 SMA below the 180 SMA, which again is a bearish sign, potentially more selling to come. You know, this is a good potential opportunity to, you know, play a put on AT&T, maybe about, you know, two, three weeks out, maybe a month out. You know, that could be a potential play that I'm looking at right now in terms of uh, AT&T. So some other ones that we saw today, we saw gold do an interesting move today. We saw it held that support that we were talking about in yesterday's video, and that one being right here from the previous support at around 1315. We saw it ended up holding it. You know, this was yesterday at 7 a.m., held it yesterday. We saw pretty much a triple bottom here, which is a good sign, a double top as well. So it was pretty much just trading in this horizontal pattern, right? The triple bottom, the double top. Now what we're waiting for is a break out of this resistance to see if it's going to continue that uptrend and potentially will take a position in JNUG, I'll take a position in JNUG if it does end up popping above here. But on this chart as well, guys, keep an eye on the 50 SMA potentially crossing over or under rather the 180 SMA, meaning there's could be more selling to come. But right now, guys, you know, it seems a bit bullish. We can potentially, if we do end up breaking that resistance, this could be a solid entry point in JNUG, which is the bull ETF here that trades on gold. And really just whenever gold goes up, guys, JNUG goes up as well. So that is one that I'm really interested in seeing how it's going to play out. Another one that I'm watching, guys, is a crude oil future. And for all you guys that don't know, crude oil has been on a ridiculous bull run over these past couple of weeks. It hit a low at $42. We topped that around $55. And now we're pulling back and we're holding that 50 SMA here. And for those of you guys that don't know, whenever crude oil is going up, UWT is going up. So this could be a potential good entry point in UWT. If crude oil does hold, let's say, the 5370 level, if we do hold that 50 SMA on crude oil, and if we do end up pushing back up, curling back up, that could be a potential entry. Let's say right around, I would say, 1385, 1390 for UWT and back up to around $15, guys. That offers around a nice 7% profit. So, some other ones that I was watching today, guys, that didn't end up playing out too well. One was actually Sony. This is one that I was watching for a potential pop. We ended up not getting it. We're seeing the, the uh, 50 SMA cross below the 180 SMA here. I was waiting for the pop above seven, uh, $47 to see if it can slowly fill the gap back up to $48 and then eventually $50. You know, it's still a possibility that it does do this since it really didn't break too hard of a pattern here. We're still holding that $45 level, so I'm still going to be keeping an eye on it, but it just did not perform to my liking today. So another one that I was watching was J&J, &J, guys. This one's not looking too great as well here on the 5-day, five 5-minute. Five it looks like we're getting rejected by the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA as well. On the 180 chart here, we're getting rejected by that 180 SMA. So, you know, we could potentially pull back maybe back to 130, which could open up a better entry point here in terms of uh, J and J. And another one I'm watching here, guys, are the natural gas futures. Are we finding a bottom here at around 260? The RSI a bit oversold right now this could be a good potential move in you guys if we do end up filling this gap back up to that 50 SMA resistance right here which could put natural gas to around 275 276 maybe even 280 guys so watch this one see if it fills that gap 
back up to 280. That is a pretty, pretty solid opportunity if it does end up showing that push. And of course, for those of you guys that don't know, you guys is a bull ETF on natural gas, meaning whenever natural gas is going up, you guys is going up. And this does offer a solid profit margin in my personal opinion. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. I would love to know. Leave a like. Subscribe if you guys want to see future content for me. Turn on that notification bell so you're notified whenever I do make a video. Thanks all you guys out there for watching, supporting the content. I really do appreciate it. Peace out.